So I absolutely got to talk about this. And this is actually something that I wish I knew when I started my journey as a software engineer, but nobody talks about it. So I'm going to tell you three things that you need to know in order to become a good software engineer or in order to survive the initial time as a junior developer. Now. So before we jump into it, I would highly appreciate that you subscribe to the channel if you have been watching my videos, because I know that you have been watching my videos and a lot of people who watch it do not actually subscribe. So if you want the channel to grow, help me with that. Now let's talk about the first point that would definitely help you. And that is never underestimate the tasks that you're working on in terms of the time and the effort required to work on those tasks. Now I wouldn't say that this is an absolute critical thing, which means that this is not something that's going to get you fired at least not when you do it once or twice. But if this becomes a pattern that you have a task that you need to finish, let's say in four hours and you say that, Hey, I'm going to do this in two hours. And then you end up doing it in four. If that becomes a pattern, then your manager or your senior, they kind of suspect that no, this person is not committing or not fulfilling the commitments. And that is a red flag in a lot of companies that I've seen. So how do you avoid this? You talk to your manager or your team lead and you discuss the approach that you're taking taking for a particular task. Let's say you're building a web app and you just need to implement the login screen. Now you could tell them that, Hey, this is the approach that I'm taking for building this login screen. I'm going to do this and this, and your senior can evaluate that approach and can say that, Hey, this approach that you're taking is correct. And I think that you can do it as well in the same time. Or they could say that, no, I know a better approach than that. And it would take you even lesser time if you follow this particular approach. Now it could be either of those cases, but it's a good idea to talk to some someone and evaluate your approach. It doesn't even have to be your senior. You could also discuss with your peers that, Hey, I'm trying this approach. What do you think about it? And that really evaluates it and helps you understand what are the estimates. And remember that when we talk about estimates, it's not something that someone is going <laughs> to come and beat you if you don't do it in time. Estimates are always because of the reason that you self improve in terms of how to evaluate the time and effort for a particular task. Now, this is important for you as a single resource or a, as an employee working on tasks, but it's also crucial that when you grow into a senior role, let's say as a senior software engineer and then a team lead and perhaps going forward as well, you know how to estimate tasks. Your estimates are closer to the actual efforts that going to be taken care of when the project starts. So it's really important that you self improve this over the time that you're working as a software engineer or a junior software engineer. Now let's talk about the second thing. The second thing is that do not rely on expecting that someone that is senior to you, either your manager, your team lead, or even your company is going to evaluate you throughout your tenure before your raise. So let's say you have a culture of two raises in a year. So a raise every six months, I would suggest that you don't expect that they're going to be monitoring you very well throughout this time. And then when it comes to your raise, they're going to evaluate you accordingly. Now they could, a lot of companies do that, but it's not necessarily the case with your company as well. It could be different. Now, what you can do is that you take care of the whole highlight of your tenure yourself, which means that you are in control. So you either create a Google doc or a Google sheet. And whenever you do something cool, let's say you were working on a project that finished on time and you were part of it. That means that you contributed a lot to it. You introduced a particular a standard or practice or tool chain or in the process that is your software development process. If that's what you did, note it down and mention all of these good things, whether you built a tool, you did open source contributions, you helped out the team member, finish something or any highlight that you can think of in that document. And when it's time for your reevaluation, you take that document in the meeting and you highlight all of those points that, Hey, this is what I've done in this particular tenure. And then you can talk about the raise, the evaluation and whatnot. And you can also hear their side as well. And this makes sure that the conversation is not one sided. That means that not only they are evaluating you based on their overview of what you did in this whole time, but you also contribute to the conversation saying that, Hey, this is what I did. So I hope this makes sense. Now let's talk about the third thing. And I believe that this is 
a bit controversial and people might hate me for this one as well. But the fact is that everyone is replaceable in a particular company. You now know that even uh, Twitter's CEO, he resigned and we got a new CEO. So that means that everyone in the team can be replaced. Now, the third tip that I have is try not to be replaceable as much as you can. It's not completely possible that you're not going to be replaced, but you can make it harder for others to replace you. And this is not in a negative way, but I'm saying this in a way that automatically increases your value grows you as well and also makes you a good asset for the team and the company that you're working on. For instance, if you are just a regular person who is doing a job in a very regular manner, which is good as well, but if you are doing it in an ordinary manner and they find someone in the team who is better at doing the job faster and there's a case where they want to replace you with the faster person considering the deadline, which is okay, but this is okay for a team level. If this becomes the case on a company level and they want to fire you because you're doing everything ordinary and we got better options than they would because companies might see time and money both as well and they might prefer someone else over you. Now the thing is that you could try to be a bit more than what you're doing. I wouldn't call it that hey do night shares or work 12 hours a day or work on weekends. That's not what I'm talking about but just a bit more than your regular job which means that you can talk about suggestions that you can put into your work methods. You can talk about adding some good things to the standards. Let's say you're working on web development projects. You can say like, hey, let's use this particular tool for let's say linting or code formatting or let's use this CI CD. I actually found it to be better as well. Or you could even talk about some practices that you can include in your project. That's one thing and this is all technical. But apart from that, you can also be a part of how the company is growing, which means that you could be a part of taking interviews. Let's say if you are a software engineer, you can can take interviews for internees. If you are a senior software engineer, you can take interviews of junior developers. So you're providing more value to the company without any extra cost, which makes you a bit more valuable, right? And the final thing could be not even technically, not for interviews, but you contribute to the culture itself. If you are a fun guy or girl, doesn't matter. If you are bringing everyone closer, you have the team spirit, you have an aura in the team that boosts up everyone, you take care of the fact that everyone in the team is happy or motivated or you make jokes or let's say you take care of making sure that hey just a, just an example that when you're working you call out your friends or your team members and say hey let's go for a break for a coffee and then we'll be productive now this is something that you're doing apart from what you are being paid for right your salary so these are the things that you could involve in your daily work that would make you less replaceable and those are the three things that i wish i knew in the beginning or someone had told me but the thing is I found out these things as I grew into multiple roles from a software engineer to a senior software engineer to a team lead to a software architect and I hope that these tips will help you and all the people that you are going to share this video with and they're going to benefit from it. As I said before, if you found this video helpful, give this a like. A lot of you don't subscribe to the channel, but watch the video. Please subscribe to the channel. That really helps the channel grow. I stream on Twitch every Wednesday and Saturday and also on YouTube. So you can come here, talk to me, ask questions and enjoy while I do live coding. And as always, happy coding and see this next video before you leave.